This is what I want to talk about. So, I know I'm late, 12 days late. I've been watching what everything's been going on in social media, okay? But I have not actually sat down and watched big, big 1090 Jake, I'm rocking with y'all, y'all rocking with me, video on Boston Ritchie. I'm out of the loop. I haven't watched this yet. And God damn, it's 22 minutes. I might have to watch it on 1.5 speed. But I need to know what's going on with this Boston Ritchie case, man. Boston snitchy, more like, allegedly. But let's get into it, man. Big 1090 Jake, we need to find out what's been going on with this. Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake. When I'm rocking with y'all, y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Florida rapper Boston Richie and his paperwork being exposed. December 20. Now, shout out to 1090 Jake because over, over the last few months, I mean, 1090 Jake's been killing it for a few years now. But like over the last few months, he has just become the paperwork king. Like I feel like he, is, he has created an entire new genre of like hip hop content paperwork exposure like it's just I, I never obviously people talk about yeah yeah show my paperwork uh, paperwork paperwork but like bro went crazy with the paperwork i don't know what i don't know what l lawyer he'd be rocking with i don't know what i mean it sounds like he's talk, always talking about going on pacer and getting legal documents shout out 1090 jake man the paperwork don nobody is safe shit man i didn't even think i had any paperwork but i might have to go back into i might have to go on pacer and look myself up because shit man this guy's finding all sorts of paperwork that people didn't know existed 28th 2022 florida-based tv would post to instagram claiming hold kodak up, blacks hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. we don't need 4k we don't need 4k hold up let's uh, let's go 720p trying to speed up this operation real quick signed artist nfl two walk Revealed paperwork on rising Florida rapper Boston Richie. Wait, so, okay, look, here's the interesting thing, right? A lot of people have been coming at Jake recently. He ain't even, apparently, he ain't even the first person that brought this up. Someone else was floating around paperwork from Boston Richie. So, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Everyone wants to point the finger at Jake, but it ain't the paper's fault. Is 1.5, is 1.25 speed too fast for 1090 Jake? Is 1090 Jake getting to the point? Maybe 1090 Jake speaks at a good speed. We'll put him on one. We'll give Jake a chance. We'll put him on one. And if he's moving slow, you know what I'm saying? We might we might bump him up to 1.25. Artist NFL 2 Wop revealed paperwork on rising Florida rapper Boston Richie. The three-minute live stream would show a piece of paper from what appears to be an interview with someone only titled as Witness 3. It states on June 20th. I can't lie to you, bro. Witness 3 would kind of be a hard rap name. If you're a snitch and you're already being exposed on paperwork, you might as well just lean into it and just be like, yo, you heard that new Witness 3? That was fire, bro. I might drop a mixtape as like Witness 4. Gunner should do that. He should change his name because now the whole snitch thing, people aren't really feeling Gunner. He should just change his name to Witness 4. 23rd 2016 witness 3 gave an interview that was i'll be honest sometimes i find 1090 jake's videos really hard to watch because his background beat is so fire that i just start freestyling to it in my head i can't concentrate on what he's saying because that beat is so hard listen to the beat in the background i hope you can hear that it's on june 23rd 2016 witness 3 gave an interview that was recorded entirely after being arrested for loitering and prowling Witness 3 was described right, I, see, so I, I didn't hear any of what he just said because the beat I'm just hearing that beat boom, 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 ta, ta, ta. and it's partly I feel like I need to like I definitely need to pick better background songs for my videos but also I don't if they're too good you won't be paying attention anyway. after being arrested for loitering and prowling Witness 3 was described as being somewhat hostile and initially denied telling James Foster about an incident in which a Northside subject had threatened him with a firearm. Now in Tuwab's live, Tuwab says Boston Richie's real name is Jalen Foster and James Foster is Boston Richie's father. How the police knew Richie told his father about the incident is still unknown. Not, not another father-son snitching situation Say it ain't so. Please tell me the please tell me the father ain't involved in this. My God, it's getting to the point you can't trust your own father out here in these streets. After several minutes of questioning, witness three stated the incident did occur and identified the subject that threatened him as a young black male with the street name Wig. Investigators previously noted that DeAndre Wiggins' nickname is Wig. Witness three was shown a photograph of Wig and confirmed it was DeAndre Wiggins that had threatened him. To be fair, you, you know, if your nickname's Wig, 
at least it's because your last name's Wiggins and not because your hairline's dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, that might be, end up being Tory Lanez's nickname in jail. They might be calling him Wig. According to Witness 3... They used to call me Wig in school, but I think it's for different reasons. The incident happened two months prior. He had been in a French town neighborhood visiting a female identified as Latavia Hill. Leandre... That beat is just too hard. I can't concentrate, man. Jake, the beat is too hard. Wiggins arrived and confronted him, and Witness 3 indicated that the issue was the fact that he was at a north side location, but he's from the south side. He said that DeAndre Wiggins threatened him and acted as if he had a handgun in his waistband. Witness 3 maintained that the Keith Street homicide was not a result of this altercation or any other criminal gang activity that he may be involved in. Now, Tuwap would show a second picture to the live stream to confirm Boston Richie or Jalen Foster is in fact Witness 3. Oh, man. So look, like people getting on Jake's case about this thing, but it was a hell of other people, this NFL dude, all over Instagram exposing paperwork. Jake's just reporting on stuff that's been put out there, you know what I mean? But hey, he's the big dog. You know what I'm saying? Jake's doing his thing. He's come up very, very fast. Well, you know, he's, he's smashed it recently, but like he's been around for a while. Like, bruh, he's going to be catching the heat for this situation, but it ain't Jake that put it out there to begin with. The paper itself reads, Witness List. The following individuals are identified in supplemental reports by witness number. In the case of Jalen Foster, his identity is concealed only in instances where he provides information pertaining to possible motive. Witness 3 would read Jalen Foster, his birth date which shows him as being 19 years old at the time, and an address on Keith Street, the same street a homicide occurred. Now I posted to my Instagram saying, y'all know I'm finna look into this, and Boston Richie would reply to my story saying, look up the case, it's under DeAndre Wiggins. Sir no, I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that element. I've I've seen this story floating around a bunch recently, but I didn't know Richie hit Jake up and said, look into it. That might have backfired. Real talk. That might have backfired. God damn. Story saying, look up the case. It's under DeAndre Wiggins. Searching for the case, I'd find that a then 24-year-old DeAndre Wiggins, or Wig, was arrested for homicide and possession of a weapon by a convicted felon. On June 4th, 2016 at 419 in the morning, the Tallahassee Police Department responded to a home on Keith Street, the same address as the one listed for Boston Ritchie on the witness list. Officers located 24-year-old DeVirus Bass laying in the front yard of his residence. He'd been shot multiple times and was transported to a nearby hospital where he died a short time later. The virus was a rapper who was originally from Orlando and went by the name D Slug or Slugger. He was also Boston Richie's cousin. Investigators would find five 9mm shell casings near where his body laid and on scene witnesses who were all known to police said that after the shooting, two black males ran on foot down Keith Street to a white Buick that fled at a high rate of speed. Investigators would learn in the following days that two separate incidents occurred only hours before the murder and were all related. Originally lying to police, a man admitted he was carjacked for his white Buick during a drug deal between midnight and 1 a.m. Two witnesses would later be interviewed and one would identify Wig as the suspect. Tallahassee police have Wig identified as a member of the Northside Doghouse Gang. At 1.49 a.m., police responded to a shooting scene where a gold Nissan had been struck by gunfire and five 9mm shell casings would be recovered, forensics concluding that it was the same ammunition from the homicide scene and fired from the same handgun. The Buick would be recovered by police the same day of the murder, and 10 days later after a warrant was signed, forensics would find Wig's finger and palm prints on the outside of the driver's side door along with another man's prints. June 13th, nine days after the murder, police pulled over a vehicle with Wig and Wig's girlfriend inside. He'd be arrested for possession of cocaine and his cell phone would be inventoried at the Leon County Jail during booking. A warrant for the cell phone would be signed days later and his text history would reveal he stopped communicating two hours before the carjacking, shooting, and murder. He texted his girlfriend after 10 a.m. saying he wanted to talk about his problems, and she replied saying, I told you I ain't want to see that gun no more. 
and you just go ham with it last night. Man, okay, this is getting crazy. This is getting crazy. So, oh my god. Okay, there's just there's just so much to this. So this uh, man, I don't know how Jake gets all of this information. It's crazy. Further text would reveal a conversation with someone who would soon become known as Witness Four. Wig texted Witness Four, "Don't tell anyone what I just told you." <laughs> Bro, how are you going to get caught like on the tapped phone or like your messages getting recovered by police talking about don't tell anyone what I just told you? Uh, don't like you just told everyone. You just told everyone that what you said was not good. Because she trying to find out. Witness four caution wig to just lay low for a couple days, then come back to the hood. June 22nd, investigators interviewed witness one, who was a close associate of wig. And while the name is blacked out of the witness list, it's said to be wig's girlfriend. In a sworn statement, Witness 1 admitted to being present on Dunn Street the day of the shooting and observed Wig with a black handgun. Witness 1 watched Wig fire into the gold Nissan before driving off with another man in the white Buick. Witness 1 didn't speak to Wig until the following day and asked him about the Keith Street murder. Wig would claim he was at his house at the time it happened. In the following days, Witness 1 would travel with Wig where Wig met with Witness 2 to sell a handgun. Investigators would interview Witness 2 next, who according to the witness list is named James Lamb and goes by the nickname Murder. Bro, when you go, all right, okay, look, all right, okay, let's go back to what I said a minute ago, right? Crimin criminal, criminality 101, okay? So number one, okay, no comment. Anytime the cops ask you anything, no comment, just don't comment, just, just don't comment, okay? Don't comment. Number two, I would say of criminality 101, Nicknames. Don't be going by the name of the crime, okay? And I, I know that this is a witness, not the actual murderer. But if your if your nickname, if your name in the street is murder, it's not it, it, you're not cut out for the criminal career. I would say I would say that if your nickname is murder, you're only going to get so many of those done before they catch you. And when they find out your name, it's on the witness statement. God damn it. Murder is a close associate of Wig and told investigators Wig tried to sell him a black handgun for $50, but because of the low price, he assumed it had been used in a crime and denied it. Murder then said Wig appeared desperate and asked where he could get rid of the gun, so Murder pointed to a body of water. <laughs> My guy was smart. He was like, you want to buy this gun for $50? He's like, definitely not. Definitely not. That's a, definitely a hot gun. Of, co of, of course that's a hot gun. You want to sell it for $50. And he doesn't even, like, he immediately says, oh, please just help me get rid of this gun. Bruh, if you're trying to, okay, criminal, okay, let's do criminal school lesson number three. If you, if you are in possession of a hot gun, don't try and sell it for a super low price. In fact, lesson three, if you're in possession of a hot gun, that has been used to commit a murder recently. Setting aside that your nickname is also murder. If you're in if you're in possession of a hot gun, I would say try and sell it for a high price. All right? Mind games. Okay? So you know what? I don't even want to sell this gun. I, I no no amount of money I would sell this gun. This is my favorite gun. This gun is not this I've never even used this gun in multiple murders. The following day, investigators interviewed Witness 3, who according to the witness list is Jalen Foster, who went by the nickname Bussa, but we know him as Boston Richie. <laughs> investigators would note Richie was a relative of the homicide victim and lived at the residence where the murder happened. Richie reluctantly recounted an incident that occurred approximately two months prior involving Wig. Richie stated he'd been in the French town neighborhood when the defendant threatened him with a firearm because he was associated with the South Side. Roughly a week later, investigators interviewed Witness 4, who according to the witness list is Trey Moore and goes by the nickname Loudy or Loud. That, that's a, that's a half-hearted redaction right there. Look at that. Like, this Witness 4... Oh, they've crossed it out, so you're not going to be able to read it. You can read the whole thing. Number Witness 5, too. I can read the whole name. I don't know why these, these feds think they're so smart. They're so smart with their, their, their pens. With their sh oh, the, the power of the Sharpie. Bro, I can read through the whole thing. What the hell? Witness list is Trey Moore and goes by the nickname Loudy or Loud. Another associate of Wig, Loud confirmed to investigators when he texted Wig to lay low, it was related to the homicide. 
Lau told investigators him and Wig spoke in person, and Wig confessed to the homicide. After the conversation is when Wig texted him telling him not to tell anyone else. Lau told investigators he saw Wig at 1 a.m. before the murder. He was traveling in a white Buick and told Loud he was going to the south side. Lau wouldn't see Wig till the following day, where Wig made a reference to catching a body. Loud asked him about it, and Wig said that he had gone to Key Street to rob someone, and he shot him multiple times. Loud knew Wig had previous altercations with individuals from the south side, but didn't know the details. That same day, investigators went to the Leon County Jail to interview Wig. He was asked to provide his whereabouts on the night of June 3rd into the morning of June 4th. Wig said he had visited a group of individuals he couldn't name until 1 a.m. when he went home. When shown photos of the white Buick, he denied any knowledge of the vehicle. When confronted with witness statements and physical evidence connecting him to the vehicle, he admitted to taking it during a drug deal. He denied the second shooting where the car was shot, then changed his story to pulling out a revolver after getting into it with a group of individuals, but he didn't fire. He claimed to have disposed of the gun in a body of water. Wig would deny involvement in the Key Street murder, once again changing his story and claiming he checked into a motel that had no record of his stay. So uh, if we're going to go, all right, criminality, lesson number four. I feel like I always see this with these stories where it's like, you got dudes where they're trying to just like outsmart the cops. They're trying to they're trying to give a story like a fake story that doesn't incriminate them. They always trip over their stories. Like always get the stories tangled up. They kind of say one thing, then they change their story, then they go another direction. Bruh, no comment. Lesson number one. Go back to lesson number one. No comment. Just don't say nothing, bro. Because if you if look if they can prove you did the crime. You're screwed. There, you're not getting out of it. It's over. Like there's nothing you can do. Doesn't matter what you. Doesn't matter the little story that you weave together to try and explain your way out of it. It ain't happening. Okay. And if you if you did move smart, and if you did if you did slide through, okay, and and pick up all the shell cat. Use the shell catch. We use was it was it Pooh Shiesty says the chopper got a shell catcher. We ain't leaving clues. He did leave a lot of clues in the end. But anyway, if you're really moving like that, right? You're catching all your shells. You're not leaving any clues. You're gonna get off. You might have to sit down and beat your trial. Take it to trial like thug. I mean, I don't know how that's gonna work out. But just don't say nothing, man. Or well, tripping over your story, giving all sorts of different stories, bro. It's not the one. Wig then admitted. To knowing witness. Right, I see you in the chat. <laughs> Someone in the chat just said, dude has the golden arches on his face. My guy is sliding for McDonald's. My guy is Burger King K. Okay, my guy is literally out here sliding for a Big Mac. I don't know. Ugh, bro, I don't even know. Three, a.k.a. Boston Richie. Wig confirmed him and Richie had a past altercation, but denied Richie's version of events. Instead, Wig said Richie and his brother pulled up on Dunn Street armed with AK-47 style rifles and threatened him. According to the affidavit, based on the totality of evidence, investigators believe Wig carjacked the Buick, shot up a car, and committed the murder. More specifically, witness testimony also demonstrated that the defendant discussed details of the homicide, attempted to rid himself of the handgun used, and was ultimately told to discard it in a body of water. Witness testimony and the defendant's own statements indicate that the defendant had passed altercations with the homicide victim's family members in the prior months, and witness statements indicate that the defendant confessed that he went to the Keith Street residence on the morning of June 4th and that once there, he shot and killed the victim. Each of these pieces of evidence were used to secure probable cause, and Wig was arrested for murder. Now I asked Boston Richie if he was in fact witness 3. He'd say when the shit took place, they interviewed him first, meaning Wig. He told Troll the person who killed my cousin. He told the police we pulled up with rifles and shit. They took his story and basically said I said what he said just to make him sound guilty to charge him. Richie would then send a picture of Wig's statement and say, this what he told Troll, you feel me? They took what he said and tried to say the same thing on my end, like I said it, you feel me? Now, not only has Boston Richie admitted to being witness three, he took to his Instagram posting Wig's statement and said, y'all gonna keep flagging or y'all gonna drop your nuts and speak on some real shit. I don't even post on IG about no street shit. I could have been sent the person y'all praise up shit public records 
Everybody know fool ratted on me. I don't be speaking on shit or chasing clout like you jits. I been outside, never been police. Fool, the reason I even became a witness in the case, he told Troll we pushed up with the Blicks. Okay, so just, just to make this very clear, okay, what Jake is saying is that Richie is indeed witness three, but Richie's, Richie's uh, argument is basically what? That he, the guy that was actually the murderer, tried to make a statement on him that was untrue, and then they tried to basically take that statement as fact, so Richie had to, like, set the record straight. Fine, but at the end of the day, if he is doing a statement, there is a, sta a statement's a statement. And again, I'm not in the streets. I'll make statements all day long. I've never snitched, personally. I did call the cops once. There was a guy who was getting beaten up outside my crib. But anyway, um, bro, like, that's, I, I mean, it's, if you witness number three, you witness number three. I don't know what else to tell you. What's crazy is the contradiction in Boston Richie's post. He's claiming Wig snitched on him by telling the police he pulled up with guns. And because of that statement, Boston Richie became a witness. But this is a lie. According to the affidavit, Boston Richie was interviewed by police on June 23rd, the same day he was arrested for loitering and prowling. Wig wouldn't be interviewed until June 29th, six days later. Oh, okay. So Jake, Jake is basically like tearing this case apart. He's saying, nah, you were interviewed first. That's Cap. He's just... Saying on June 23rd, this to, witness three was interviewed on June 23rd. This next statement didn't happen until June 29th. Jake is Jake is a beast. Okay, he's the paperwork king. I wouldn't try and trip over, be changing my stories. I mean, it sounds like Richie's kind of doing what I just said not to do, bro. He should have just kept quiet, no comment in this thing. He could have just said the whole thing was fake. But now he's getting himself all tangled up and it's not looking good. Boston Richie could have at any point in time denied speaking with police and wasn't even being questioned about loitering, which was why he was arrested. Instead, he identified Wig by a photograph to police, told them he'd previously been threatened by Wig, and maintained that the Key Street murder was not a result of the altercation or any criminal gang activity Richie may have been involved in, meaning Richie wanted to clarify to police he had nothing to do with the murder. But his sworn statement would make him an official witness in the murder case. And his name would be concealed because the information he provided pertained to a possible motive. His sworn statement would also be used as evidence in finding probable cause to charge Wig with murder. Now Boston Richie is saying Wig ratted on him for telling police Richie pulled up with guns. So that would mean Richie ratted for telling police Wig threatened him. But Boston Richie didn't just rat too, he ratted first. So that that is funny. He kind of like Jake is pretty smart. Like he really does catch him out here. Cause even by Boston's own admission, like saying, like, oh, it was the other guy that ratted on me. Well, they're basically doing the same thing to each other, right? They've got con con uh, con conflicting narratives on both sides, Richie and this guy Wig. But they're both telling. And if Bo if Boston's saying, oh no, he was telling. He's kind of like exposing this as as telling, right? He's kind of like basically exposing the situation as being a telling type situation that he is also entangled in. And I'm a fan of Boston's music, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought that um that that stop dissing song or whatever it is with Dirk's fire, but you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I don't know why people are so down on snitching, bro. I'm still bumping Gunner. I'm still bumping six nine, bro. Wig was asked about Boston Richie's statement, denied it, then gave his own. Wig would later plead no contest and be sentenced to 15 years in prison for second degree murder and possession of a firearm by a felon. Now Boston Richie would dismiss the accusations against him as NFL 2 WAP hating and trying to blemish his image. Boston Richie's team would point out that 2 WAP is from the Holton Street Apartments, the same apartments Boston Richie and Future shot a video at and handed out over $10,000 worth of sneakers. Richie's team would argue if he was a rat, why hasn't anyone done anything about it? They'd further accuse 2WAP of just trying to gain clout after getting signed to Kodak three months ago. But 2WAP would claim he got the paperwork from someone in Boston Richie's own hood and exposed it as soon as he got it. Regardless of whose side is more convincing, the paperwork doesn't pick a side. And Boston Richie has more paperwork that's yet to be revealed. In December of 2013, a woman reported her Honda Accord stolen. 
Later that day, an unmarked police officer spotted the vehicle backed into a parking space on Holton Street, and after a short time watching the vehicle, he observed two black males later identified as DeJaris Robinson and a then 16-year-old Jalen Foster, aka Boston Richie, get into the vehicle and drive off. Locating the vehicle again, three males were now inside, changing positions in the vehicle before driving off as the officer once again lost contact. Another officer saw the three black males matching the descriptions given walking away from a dead-end street. He beat located so hard, the man. stolen Honda as another officer fire. responded to the scene, where we observed Boston Richie walking away from the other two males. He detained Richie, read his Miranda warning, and Richie agreed to answer questions. Richie advised the officer he was the person driving the vehicle. Questions were stopped at that time, and Richie was transported to the Tallahassee Police Department for a continued interview. Officers located the other two men, identified as DeJaris Robinson and Kelton Forbes, and neither would make any statement to police. Retracing the path they walked away from, police found the keys to the Honda and a stolen Ruger revolver in a garbage can. Investigators interviewed Boston Richie at the police station. Post Miranda, Richie agreed to answer questions. He advised that he had stolen the vehicle with three other juveniles. He only knew one of the juveniles by the name George, and George told him the Honda had the keys inside of it, and they took the car between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. Man, this is it's becoming it's, it's so, such a layered story, this. Like, it's so, there's just so much going on, so many intertwined situations, and it just seems very clear to me that. He was witness number three, you know what I'm saying? I can't really deny that. I'm just going to grab some food real quick. I'm, I'm going to continue. All right, I'm, I'm going to eat my dinner while I eat this. I, I don't care what anyone thinks. Get me back in focus, gang. Let's go. Let's go. Driving it around until 7 a.m. He kept the keys in his possession the entire day until he returned to pick it up and was stopped by police. He then picked up Robinson and Ford. Sure, if one of them threw the gun in the garbage can after he passed it. Now, the affidavit states, due to all parties knowing that the vehicle was stolen and their actions depriving the victim of her property, Boston Richie, Robinson, and Forbes were all charged with grand theft of a motor vehicle. Now, I asked Boston Richie about this case, and he'd say he took the charges for the gun and car, and that's why he went to prison. He'd say, I told the police they were in the car but never knew it was stolen because he stole it. He'd even say one of them was his cousin who he was with. But just like the last case, what Boston Richie is saying isn't adding up to the paperwork. The affidavit clearly states Boston Richie told police, he told- Bruh, bruh, Jake's got too much evidence. Look, we're gonna turn this into a mukbang in a minute. I know, I know you guys want to hear me crunch the food. I, I did the wrong, I did the wrong thing. I'm gonna get ASMR mukbangs popping. But let's just finish this video because I want to know what Jake has to say. I've been waiting to watch this video for a long time. But bro, this guy, this guy, Jake, man, he's 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 coming with mountains of evidence. I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know where to go from here. Like, what can you say to this? I know, I know, Richie's kind of denying it, but my God, like. Bruh, you can't, like, if, if 1090 Jake does a video on me and says that there's paperwork on me and I'm a snitch, it's uh, like, that's it, it's over, I'm not even going to argue, there's nothing, nothing to be said. Told his co-defendants the car was stolen a total of three times. Because of this, all three teens were arrested and charged with GTA because they knowingly got into a stolen vehicle. Now, Boston Richie's team would say he was only 16 at the time and the charges got dropped for the other two teens. But in my opinion, it doesn't matter. The two other teens refused to make statements to police, while Boston Richie agreed to make a statement, and his statement got them arrested. So in total, 
Boston Richie has conducted two separate interviews with police, got his own cousin and another teen arrested, and gave a sworn statement in a murder case where the alleged shooter was sentenced to prison. Now I'll be... Yeesh. Uh, look, Jake, Jake is letting the paperwork stack up, all right? I, I just don't know how you can argue with this man. I mean, the amount of info that he had, and it's not just the Witness 3 thing, he had more to it. Like, bro... I'm I'm scared of Jake, and I've never even committed a crime or snitched on anyone, and I'm genuinely I'm scared. Let's see what he has to say. Be honest with you, I'm a fan of the music. I didn't expect all of this, and when I spoke with Boston Richie's team, they damn near convinced me. Oh, he just trying to get clout off of his name. He didn't tell. He said he bumped into dude, but it wasn't about nothing. It ain't like he said he killed his cousin and all oh, the thing about the car. And he was only 16. And, you know, the, the charges got dropped. But you can't deny the paperwork, right? When I'm hearing them say it, I'm like, yeah, it doesn't sound like he snitched. It sounds like he fucked up. He shouldn't have said anything to the police, period. But not only that, looking at the paperwork, it clearly states the information he gave, the sworn statement in the murder case, was towards a possible motive. That's what the police were seeking. And they used his sworn statement as evidence towards the probable cause to arrest the shooter. Bro, I mean, I mean, that's just, that's facts. Like, that's what they're saying. I mean, I, I want to get into this in a little bit. Like, I'm down to get into this next after we do the mukbang. But, like, I see Bruce Rivers reacting to this, and I'm a big fan of Bruce Rivers. But it's like, I feel like there's a big disconnect between, like, you know, Jake's just laying out the information that's, that's there. Like, we'll watch the Bruce Rivers video next. I'm down to do that. We'll do that next. But, like, bruh, like, it's all there. I mean, it's it's dead and done. I've shown y'all through this video the other snitches in the murder case, which were all the shooter's friends. Murder, what was the other one's name? Loud, his own girlfriend. But the thing about that witness list is Boston Richie is on it. Boston Richie's name is with theirs. Everything that every one of them said was used as evidence. And then I find the Grand Theft Auto case. He's on the list, man. His name's on the list. He's on the list. It's like some Wayne's World shit, bro. If you're not on the list, if you're on the list, see what the list says. You're with your cousin, your homeboy. Y'all get picked up, whatever. Their charges get dropped. That's fine. But the fact that you told the police, yeah, they knew the car was stolen. And then you said it again. Yeah, they knew it was stolen. I told them it was stolen. And then you said it again. Yeah, they knew it was stolen. That's why they kept coming to my house that day. The only reason they even got arrested is because you were talking to the police. Because you agreed to give an interview. And you can't say it was because you were 16. Because they decided not to make a statement. It says they refused. You could have did the same thing that they did. So to be a rapper and have given... A sworn statement in a murder case that led to a conviction and an interview in another case that led to two arrests. It doesn't look good. Now, looking back at the DMs between me and Boston Richie, it's crazy because he lied. He said that Wig was interviewed first and Wig ratted on him. That it was Wig's fault that he was a witness in the case. Because Wig said Boston Richie ran down on him. That's the maddest thing. And it's almost like... Look, I ain't trying to beef with Boston Richie, but it's almost like he made the same mistake with Jake as he made with the cops. Like, he should have just not said nothing. But he came with a whole story opening his mouth where he shouldn't have done. He should have just left. He should have left the left. Not said anything to the cops. Not said anything to the Jake. To, to, the, to Jake. Holy shit. I just realized 1090 Jake. They call the cops the Jakes. I'm not saying he's a cop, but I'm saying don't talk to the Jakes. Any kind of Jake. 1090 Jake. The Jakes. Just keep it, keep it shut, man. Don't be, don't be doing that. Don't be, just don't be, just, just keep it quiet, bro. Keep it zipped. Like, uh, bro, and I like Boston Richie. I don't even care, but. With the AK styled weapon. But it was a lie because the paperwork says Boston Richie was interviewed first. And when asked, 
Boston Richie admitted that Wig ran down on him and threatened him. So if you're going to accuse Wig of ratting for doing the same thing you did, then what did you do? Sounds like you ratted, right? And I mean how I look at it because I'm unbiased with this shit. I was hit up about it. Yo, look into this. All right, I'm going to look into it. How I feel about it is if me, 1090 Jake, doing the videos that I do, how I do them, if I was a witness in a murder and gave a sworn statement and that man got convicted because what I said was used as evidence to secure probable cause and then I got arrested because I said that my two homies knew that the car was stolen so they got arrested for it too, what would y'all call me? It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all and y'all rocking with me. Until next time. Bro, that was a hell of a breakdown from Jake, bro. What's that on? 664K views. Man, that is crazy. Look, the facts are there, bro. It is what it is. It is what it is. <sighs> telling Jake to look it up and being... <laughs> telling Jake to look it up and being that confident, knowing you told twice, is a wild sense of delusion. Streets is dead. Bruh. Bruh. The fact that Jake called Richie a rat in this video, even after talking to him on Instagram, says a lot about his character. Jake is a stand-up guy. He don't go for just what anyone says. Instead, he goes off paperwork and doesn't pick a side. My God. 1090 Jake, man. Keeping it real. Keeping it solid at all times. Now, I know that Bruce Rivers, everybody's favorite internet lawyer, had something to say about this. And we're going to get to that. But first, I'm going to eat some food. And uh, I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you folks and phone em, Curious about the food. My lovely girlfriend has just made me an excellent dinner. I don't even see that. Hang on. And I'm going full screen. We're going full screen. Look at this. We're about to do a mukbang up in here. This is like a vegan chicken salad or something. It's like a vegan chicken skewer. With some croutons. This is crouton gang. We're about to go ASMR for you guys. But appreciate my girlfriend. She's, she's going to be able to hear me doing this. So shout out to you. Appreciate this. Croutons are slapping. That's a 10 out of 10 crouton. Let's get on the skewers. See what the skewers are saying. About to get skewered. So listen. 10 night Jake, man. The king of paperwork. The prince of paperwork. Since this is another P. Oh, man. I just dropped a big piece of this fake chicken. My desk is a mess. Oh, that's fire. Oh. This is crazy. Tell you what. Are you guys ready for a big flex? Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a very big fan of crushed black pepper. Okay. But out here in these streets, sometimes you don't want to get your wrists all sore, doing a whole wrist grinded, breaking your wrist, doing pepper. You don't know what you're going to need those wrists for later that day. Pause. But I, I choose to pr preserve my wrists. So you know your boy's got the electronic pepper grinder. Now check out this. Check out this action, okay? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, glorious. Just straight up. Straight to the dome. Black pepper. Not messing around. It's delicious. I might have uh, put the wrong sauce on some of this. But this is about to be fire. So I might just have to have a little munch. Like ice spice on this delicious meal. This is looking fire. This is actually a way more elaborate meal than I was even expecting. So, uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to have such a... I thought I was going to get turkey dinosaurs, if I'm honest with you. But, no, this is fire. Shout out, to my, shout out to my lady. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she'll hook you up with the recipes to do a cooking stream or something. Bro, you know I've got the RGB pepper grinder. That's how I am out here. I'm literally out here eating knife and fork because I'm a sophisticated English man. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to eat a bit of this food because I'm quite hungry. And then I'm going to react to Bruce River Rivers. Or I could just react to that and eat. I don't know. What are, you, what are you saying? Is it rude to eat on stream and react? Like, is that disrespectful to Jake? Like, I don't want to I don't want to have to catch a fade from Jake because I ate during his, uh, his stream. I see you asking in the chat how often I have to recharge my electronic pepper grinder. And I'll tell you what, people. You know what's mad? I've had it for months. Not recharged it once. I might have recharged it once, but it wasn't even low. I just recharged it because I just felt like something cool to do. But literally, the thing does not quit. It was endless charge. Pepper for days, literally. M weeks and months of pepper.
Get your salads out, gang. I want to see the salads in the chat. I want to see, like, lettuce emoji in the chat or something. That's what I need to see, man. 2023. I don't want it to be annoying, though. I don't want to react to, like, Big Bruce Rivers and then have people be mad that I wasn't paying attention. Because I'll be real with you. I'm trying to enjoy this delicious meal. It's a delicious thing to him. Did anyone watch the Fulcrum No Jumper interview? That was hilarious. It's cool to eat and watch people have piss audio in their streams and leave it in. Piss audio. Do you mean bad audio? Or do you mean me urinating with the sound on? Mm. Salad emojis in the chat, gang. Let's go. Let's go. Listen, I might have to start. Maybe I should start my own branded trap law electronic pepper grinder as a business. I always wanted to get an electronic weed grinder too, but I don't know if they make those. They make those. Am I going to do a full video on Young Dolph? I did do a video on him while he was still alive. I feel like there's just, I, I feel like the whole case hasn't been quite settled yet for me to feel confident that I can like, add something new to the situation. But man, I was a big Young Dolph fan. RIP. Such a, such a sad situation. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Hit him. Default asks, do I still listen to Yay? I found it hard to listen to his music after the latest controversy. I'm not going to cap. Nah, I ain't really rocking with Yay after that. After that situation, man, it's hard to rock with Yay. Look, I'm not... I'm not uh, of the Jewish faith, but, bro, you can't be saying that stuff. You can't be out here saying the, sh the stuff that Kanye was saying, bro. Give me a break. Like, you just can't be doing that, bro. I, you know what I'm saying? I love everyone. Like, how are you going to be out here saying that stuff? And as a British man with British ancestors, like, bro, World War II, they were bombing London, bro. We're not, we're not, we're not rocking with, with, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to say the guy's name. That dude that had Germany rocking in World War II. You know what I'm saying? That, that Kanye is apparently a big fan of that he loves. Bro. bro they, they were bombing London, bro. Like, we are not rocking with dude. It's not happening. We're not going back in history and saying that that was all cool. I don't know what Kanye's smoking. Apparently he's got married today to some architect. Like, what's that all about, bro? He's marrying some chick. I can't front. I'd never even heard of her. You went from Kim Kardashian to some architect nobody's ever heard of. Probably designed your domes for the homeless people. You know what I'm saying? The Ape of Naples. I can't listen to anything on my beautiful dark twisted fantasy anymore. Facts, bro. Here's the thing. Quick bite for emphasis. Here's the thing. Kanye West, and I don't even want to say what it is that he did, because I don't want to get cancelled. But he's denying, he's out here, he's literally out here denying and downplaying a tragedy that happened in World War II where six million people died. How's he out here saying that that didn't happen or that that wasn't like that? You know, here's what I want to do, okay? If he's going to deny things that happened in World War II, I'm going to deny Kanye's whole career, okay? Six million albums sold? Never happened, Kanye. I don't think he even released any of those albums. You know what I'm saying? If he wants to revise history and say that, you know, say that that dude with a Hugo Boss suit from World War II that was tweaking on meth at the Olympics, if he wants to say that that dude is a guy that we should be looking up to, nah. We ain't talking about Kanye. His career never happened. It literally never happened. College dropout? Never heard of it. I took it off my wall. I used to have a signed copy of the college dropout on my wall. I paid like 500 bucks for that. Gone. I mean, it is just over there, admittedly, but I ain't trying to have that on my back wall. Trash. Kanye's career never happened. Late registration? Late register. I don't, never heard of it. Never, ever heard of it. Never heard of any of his songs. It never happened. None of it ever happened. No, his career never happened. Did not happen. The salad is fire. We're out here. We're out here. Deliciousness. Kanye never even dropped out. Kanye never... Here's the thing. Here's all I'll say. 
Kanye's mum would be spinning in her grave at a speed so fast, I think we could actually, you know, we could drill all the way through the earth and create some sort of super highway to China. Because Donda West would not have put up with this shit, bro. Donda West would have slapped Kanye in his mouth for talking about all this all this World War II stuff. And I ain't even trying to say... You know, you know who I'm talking about. That guy with a little mustache in World War II. I ain't even trying to say his name. But here, bitch. You know what really annoys me? A lot of these guys that are on this Kanye train that are trying to revise, revise history about World War II. These guys, okay... They clearly don't like. They clearly don't know their history, because oh, we can talk about tape. They clearly don't know their history. But a lot of people keep going around going, oh, you know, those dudes in World War Two, the Germans, oh, they had drip, they had swag, oh, they had Hugo Boss suits, bro. Hugo Boss, that's not drip. Hugo Boss is trash. Who do you know that wears Hugo Boss? Tell me a fresh dressing rapper. They might be in a Miri, Dior, rocking some Louis. Hell, AV, hell, maybe even a fresh Nike tech. I don't know anybody who's fresh who's rocking Hugo Boss. So that's dead. We're dead in that narrative. Oh, oh, World War, oh, the Germans, oh, they had drip. No, they didn't. Their drip was trash, bro. Tell you who has. Tell you who's got drip. British people. I ain't hearing it no more. Any whom, any whom. Sorry if my uh, my f knife and fork on the plate is annoying you. Just chopping up some, uh, chopping up some. Uh, what are they called? Croutons. Chopping up some croutons. The Dave Chappelle special. Did he do a special on, on Ye? That would be hilarious. I feel like Ye... Let's just forget about him, man. Let's just forget it ever happened. Like, let's just pretend it never happened. Like, R. Kelly. You know how when R. Kelly got convicted? Like, look, R. Kelly has got some fire music. And it's hard to let go. It's the remix to Ignition. Popping fresh. It's hard to let go of that. But you forget about it. Because the guy's a piece of, piece of dirt. Right, what do you want to talk about? I could talk about I could talk I could talk about Tate. I could talk about Okay, let me know in the comments. Should we go on something completely new? Should I react to the Bruce Rivers 1090 Jake beef because I feel like we could go full circle with that narrative. I do have some funny stuff on Tate that I could be I could be looking at. I kind of do want to talk about Tate. I want to talk shit about Tate. We could talk about Andrew Callahan getting cancelled. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's an L. That's an L for your boy, Andrew Callahan. But what can I say, bro? What can I say? I wasn't a huge fan of dude recently. Um, what else could we react to? We talked about 03 Greedo. I wanted to do that. I feel like I'm a bit late to the party, but the Lush and Flacco beef on No Jumper, that was definitely worth talking about. Um, man, I got so many things I wanted to talk about, but I don't think I got time for it all. I don't think I got time for it all. But maybe I have to get onto it next time. But um, I'm gonna hang a little bit longer, bro. Who's the dude? Uh, the, I see people in my comments constantly talking about uh, when I said when I said there were gonna be songs unlocked at 10k. If you don't know, if you're not an OG of this channel, this second channel, this is my main channel. This second channel, okay. Originally, I was going to have this be a record label, and my idea was once I got it to 10k subs, I was going to drop a song. I did actually drop a song, but the shit flopped, and now looking back, I realise that it was just dumb. It wasn't that interesting. Like, it was just this dumb thing, and, like, I made the smart move and said, you know what? I'm going to flip it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it and just make this into, like, a reaction second channel, and it was the best move I'd have ever done, because if I was still making music on this channel... None of y'all would be here. No one would be watching. No one would be listening and reacting and all that stuff. So that ain't happening. But anyway, um, people talking about setting the No Jumper universe on fire when I came. Bro, I, I'm so late, but I have actually still got a, a LA No Jumper vlog where I go through getting into all of the beef, meeting Adam, going to LA, all the stuff, that, all the crazy stuff that went off when I was out there. And it's nearly done. I just need to do a few more changes to it. And it's going to be fire. So there is going to be an entire long video on the main channel on that. Um, can I ask, why do you why do you think people have such a polar opinion about Tate? Either comments are full on simp mode or it's the, 
excuse me, or it's the other end of the spectrum. I'm neither pro or anti-Tate. Here's the thing. Andrew Tate came up off of the whole being divisive thing. He knew if he said really outrageous things, oh, women can't drive, um, I don't know, girls work on my webcam business and I don't pay them any of their money. Like, he knew that people would respond to that. Saying boring stuff, saying middle-of-the-road stuff doesn't get you up quick on social media. But he probably didn't realise he was taking shortcuts. Yeah, oh, I'm the most Googled man in the world. So was Trump. But, like... You know what I mean? It depends what you do with it. And it seems it seems it's possible that what he did with it with it was traffic a bunch of chicks, frankly. So, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen with Tate. I know a lot of people are defending him. People I like defending Tate. Fair enough. But I feel like it's the it's the same people who wanna be like, Oh, we're really focused on the truth and, and keeping things true and factual, defending Tate. And it's like you don't have the facts yet. So you can't really defend Tate yet. And I did hear, I did hear this audio of him recently, and I'll tell you what, it, it's looking worse. It's almost like, you know when that Tory Lanez audio came out? And it was like, obviously, that's him admitting he did it. He doesn't admit he did it on the on the thing. But, like, that's the sound. That That's the, the Tory Lanez audio. That's the recording of an... That, that is an audio recording of a dude apologizing for doing some bad shit, i.e. shooting somebody. So, you know what I'm saying? That that Tate that Tate audio it's pretty damning. Uh, you know, it's not proof of a crime, but you know what I mean. It's like it's the smoke. It's like where where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, that that is quite a large plume of smoke. Bit of ASMR chewing for you there. But here's the thing, right? Here's the thing about Tate. We don't know definitively whether or not he did or didn't do it at this stage. But let's just keep it a buck. The guy was running around for, for years bragging about, I have six passports. I can go to different jurisdictions. The Matrix can't track me down. That seems like some shit a human trafficker would do. Six passports? That seems like some human trafficker type shit to have. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of it kind of makes me it makes me laugh. A lot of people have been saying recently, like, oh, why would Andrew Tate need to human traffic girls? He can have any girl he wants. Why would it, why would he need to human traffic these girls and have them working on webcam where he keeps all the money to buy the Bugatti? You idiot! Like, the guy's driving around flexing all of these cars. He loves his cars. It's like, why would he need to traffic for the money? Like, for the he was he had these chicks working on stream or webcam, or OnlyFans, whatever it was, which he admitted, that's not even, the case hasn't happened yet, but he is in hours of content talking about, I had a webcam business, I did this and that. So, there's your motive, okay? And we don't know whether or not he did it, but it's like, there's your motive, okay? Yes, for the money. He, his origin story is literally, I had no money after kickboxing, so I fucking, so I, oh, I got a bunch of girls and invited them around and got them on webcam. Like, you know what I mean? Of course. Like, it sounds like he was looking for money. He worked out that he could get this little thing with the girls in the little the little webcam dungeon going. And, um, you know, like, bruh, that's, that seems like all adds, all adds up to me. You know, he was trying to buy the Bugatti, worked out that he could, he could get women on webcam and keep all of their money, which I don't think that's cool. Like, I used to watch a lot of Andrew Tate's content where he would talk about, oh, you know, I, I have my girlfriends on webcam and they give me all the money. If they truly love me, they give me all the money. And I just remember hearing that and thinking, like, I don't know if that's legal, actually. I, I'm not actually sure that's legal. Like, in the UK, it doesn't matter whether it's a webcam business and the girl's in love with you or if it's just a rinky-dink store and you've got somebody working stacking the shelves. It doesn't matter whether it's in love with you or if you're just an asshole. If at the end of the month you say, I'm not paying you, for the work you did. That's illegal. Like, all this talk for, like, oh, the lover boy method with Andrew Tate. It's like, set aside the lover boy method. He's got people working for him and he's not paying them. Doesn't matter if they're in love with... Like, bro, this is... Biz like, if we want to go back to what we talked about a minute ago with, like, criminality 101. Right, if you're employing people, you've got to pay, pay them. That's not even no top G, oh, I've, I've mastered the Matrix, I'm not paying anyone. Bro, Matrix or not, if people do some work for you, whether it's webcam, building, you, your waiter in a restaurant, 
you got to pay for that. You, like literally, you have to pay, bro. You have to pay people. Like, what, what, what are you talking about? I don't pay the chicks if they truly love me. Sounds like some lover boy method type stuff. So, I don't know, man. I almost feel like Andrew Tate kind of like convinced himself that he's like the good Jeffrey Epstein. He's like the cool Jeffrey Epstein. So, you know what I mean? Like, he, he's like, oh, you know, I've done it my way, and I'm a top G, and I'm cool, and it's all right. You know, it's it's okay, but. I don't know, man. It's not, I don't think it's looking too good for Andrew Tate. And I feel like, you know, I was a fan of his content. I found him massively entertaining, but I did always get this sense with him of just like, I felt like a lot of the stuff he was talking about wasn't legal. I mean, I, I listened to the whole like eight hours. There was like a hundred business lessons of Hustlers University or something. Didn't pay for it. I pirated that shit straight up off YouTube. Easy. Not paying 50 bucks a month for that. I got, I got way more important things to spend 50 bucks on. But anyway, um, listen to that whole thing. And it's like several several of the business lessons Andrew Tate teaches are kind of bad slash criminality. You know, he's got that famous one where he says, oh, somebody came to me and they said they need 250 grand to start a makeup brand. And I, I said, oh, you don't need any of that. You just start selling them. You put up the web store, you put up the Shopify store, and then you just, you know, you just sell the product. You don't even have anything. And you worry about delivering it later. Yes, that's cool. That's bootstrapping a smart startup-y way to try and get some orders. But at a certain point, like, you cross over a line and then you are committing fraud. And it's like, that's not real. Like, this sort of, like, off shoot from the hip business advice Andrew Tate was dishing out. Like, there were several times listening to his advice. And he's a smart guy. And I, I thought I did definitely learn a few things from him. But there was also several moments where I was just like, nah, I think that's illegal, actually, what he's telling me to do there. That's kind of fake it till you make it stuff that he would say he did. I think that's kind of illegal. And uh, I think it just went to his head, man. I feel like he definitely was skirting on the edges of, of legality and uh, just thought he was untouchable. Six passports didn't help him, did it? Oh, I've got six passports. So if I want to leave Romania, I can fly on my Nigerian passport. Where's your Nigerian passport now, bro? Like That didn't do you any favors. You sat in there in Romania with your six passports in jail. So I don't know, bro. Anyway, we can move on from talking about Tate. I'm going to have a few more bites of my food and then maybe we'll just react to, to one more thing real quick. One more thing. Big bite. Mm. This is so fire. Sorry. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Ashley, Katoffi, Mr. King, Reptar CH, Lona Wolf, gang. Appreciate you guys. It's crazy. It's, it's funny because it's like I used to do Twitch streams and my Twitch was dead. My Twitch was so dead. Nobody was rocking with my Twitch. Like, I swear down. I would average like 30 people on Twitch. It ain't all about the numbers or the amounts of people, but like, we got like a good 250 of you right now, man. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. Like, that's a big dub for me. I never had this many people. Vovchik, shout out from Ukraine. Hang in there, my G. Hang in there. I, I'm trying to be careful what I say. I don't want to say anything offensive. But shout out to Ukraine, man. You got to hold it down. You got to take the W, bro. You know what I mean? Keep Keep collecting packs. That's all I'll say. That's the best way I put it. Shout out to everybody that was there for the Twitch streams. I'm not dissing the Twitch streams, but YouTube is where my heart belongs. I was trying to do it on Twitch for a bit. It was an L. I'm not even trying to trying to talk about it. It says, Wild, he won't even speak on your dig. He must be involved. Yo, I'm not involved. What happened to your dig, bro? I've been trying to crack the your dig case for years myself. What happened to your dig, bro? Because as far as I know, I, th I think I communicated with your dig a bit. It's a long ass time ago. But, um... <laughs> I'll answer this, that question next. But I I communicated with you, Dig, maybe a couple times, I think. Um, but he was like, he'd gone out, he was going out to work with no jumper and then he just fell off the map. I don't know what happened to him, bro. Apparently he's okay, he's still alive and well. But bro, your Dig was fire. Um, where is Trap Geek? Trap Geek is out here, man. He's He's been working on a video for a long ass time. It's finna be fire. When Trap Geek does finally drop, what he drops, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil the surprise. But it's going to be fuego. It's going to be fuego. Okay. It's going to be lit. Anywho, let's uh, let's wrap it up with so many things I want to react to and talk about. But I'm going to save it. I'm going to, I'm going to keep 
Ah, there's so many things, man. There's so many things. Nick Crowell, I appreciate you, my G. I had a song about my ex where I met a girl in the Discord comments and got her Discord. What? It was a song about my ex where I met a girl in the comments and got her Discord. Man, I don't even know. If people people apparently meeting chicks in my in my comments. That's fire. That's fire. Um Okay. All right. I want to react to the Bruce Rivers thing. Let's just let's throw on the Bruce Rivers thing. Because then I can tie this all together. Right. We can tie it all together with the 1090 Jake thing. And I actually do have an opinion on this. And it might not be what you're expecting. Bruce Rivers is the criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers sees the criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers sees the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And it's gonna react to all the self snitching. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer into Boston Richie. Boston Richie is a rapper. His name is Jalen Foster. Um, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is snitches, okay? Snitches are throughout our judicial system. The federal government uses snitches on just about every single case, especially the drug cases. But there's a real danger when you label somebody a snitch and they're not a snitch. That's why they're not labeled in documents as their name. Usually you witness A or B or whatever. 1090 Jake has posted a video alleging that Boston Richie is a snitch. And it is so reckless. And I'm gonna read you the only evidence he has of that. Florida rapper Boston Richie and his- Now, before we get further into this, I wanna kind of like prime you guys with my opinion on this. Because I lo I'm a big fan of both 1090 Jake and Bruce Rivers. And I think, I've, I've actually already watched this video. But Bruce Rivers, essentially, his angle is like, what Jake is doing is dangerous. And he's essentially making the case that Jake, like, is, he's sort of making the case that Jake is misunderstanding the situation, or like, that he's sort of suggesting that Jake is sort of going overboard or taking things a step too far, as far as, like, identifying Richie as the supposed snitch, for being implicated in this case, you know, this murder case where he, he had seemingly made a statement. Now, here's where I think the disconnect is taking place, okay? You've got 1090 Jake, who is a real street dude. He's been to jail. You know, he's he's known for, for his prison content. He's a blood. He's really been through it. He's lived that lifestyle. So Jake is coming at this from, from the perspective of one of the guys dealing with people in a gang, potentially, right? If you're a blood... You, you you have a certain definition of what somebody is as a snitch. Somebody has made a statement seeming like, I'm not a blood, I'm not a gangster, okay? I'm somewhere in the middle, but uh, uh, not in the middle. I don't do crimes, but like, I'm not also not a lawyer. So I'm sort of in neutral party in between Jake and Bruce. But I feel like the burden of proof is so much higher. If you're actually a criminal, or if you lived a criminal past, you've been a blood, you've been in the prison system, anyone that even remotely might write a statement, implicate themselves into a police investigation, you, you're going to be on the lookout for anybody that even would remotely tell. Why would you get into a situation where you're committing crimes with somebody who writes statements, okay? So the burden of proof is very high from the situation of Jake, okay? Like, he's a blood. It's the, he's going by the street code. Bruce Rivers, on the other hand, he is coming at this from the lawyer's perspective. Now, the burden of proof on the lawyer's perspective is actually... Although Bruce Rivers, I think he's a defense lawyer, you know, whether you're defense, prosecutor, whatever, you're essentially, you've got a much more lenient and loose definition of what fully snitching constitutes. And in Bruce Rivers' case, I think what he's kind of saying is that, like, Richie never took the stand. He never he never actively worked as far as putting away the guy, who was it, Wig, that ended up going to jail for the murder. So it's sort of like, Bruce is the complete other end of the spectrum as far as, like, he really believes that this situation, this snitching, is, like, it's not as extreme as Jake's making out, is sort of the way he's saying it. And he's sort of saying, oh, Jake's being dangerous. Or, like, it's dangerous the way that Jake is putting this snitch label on somebody. It might lead to something bad happen. Them getting killed, them getting attacked, them being seen as a snitch. 
But I think there's a, there's a really interesting disconnect here because as far as Jake sees it, he's looking at it from the street code, from the street perspective, which is like, bro, you implicated in telling, I do not rock with that. Uh, you're a snitch, basically. As simple as that. You wouldn't commit crimes for somebody who's written any sort of statement of any kind. Whereas Bruce Rivers, the way he's seeing it, is it's sort of like, oh, you know, it wasn't like he got on the stand and testified. This was an unrelated statement. It didn't really contribute, even though in Jake's video, he kind of says that, you know, this statement was actually used to, to build a case and, you know, to, to as reasonable was it to like to get an affidavit or whatever. So it's really interesting because they're both coming at it from completely different perspectives. And I think, to be honest, I feel like Bruce maybe goes too hard on Jake. But I think when you realize that they're both coming at it from complete polar different perspectives of life, it, it makes more sense. So let's watch it some more and you can see what I mean paperwork being exposed that's oh that sounds so ominous his boss and richie and his paperwork being exposed like he's a snitch and he's the one that's responsible for the conviction of deandre wiggins let's just back up a little bit deandre wiggins in 2016 was responsible for the murder of davaris bass davaris bass is boss and richie's cousin that's a well-known fact there is a gun they had dna on the gun they had mr wiggins own statements that he inculpated him and he pled guilty so there wasn't a trial there was no snitch that testified against him and so let's kind of look and see what exactly Mr. Foster or Boston Ritchie, what he said actually. He was interviewed and he lived at the same address. So witness three, and let's say witness three is in fact Boston Ritchie, was So just to make this clear, right, what Bruce is saying, he's saying, well, it didn't go to trial. So yes, he wrote a statement. Yes, he is witness three. But Bruce is saying that Jake's going overboard calling him a snitch. But then at the same time, like the way that Jake sees it and a way that somebody going by the street code would see this, bro, if Richie's witness three, you're witness three, you're a witness, you, you tell him, you're, you're on paperwork, you're a witness. If you are witness three, you are not credible in the street code. Maybe as a lawyer, maybe in the white collar circuit, being witness three ain't so bad. But in Jake's circle, coming from where he came from, you can't be witness three. So that's sort of the really interesting like difference in perspectives we've got going on here. Interviewed, witness three is a relative of the homicide victim and resided at Keith Street residence where the homicide occurred. Nothing wrong there. Witness three reluctantly recounted an incident that occurred approximately two months prior involving the defendant. So he's not even talking about the murder that happened. Witness three stated that he or she had been in a Frenchtown neighborhood when the defendant threatened him with a firearm. The incident supposedly occurred because witness three was associated with Tallahassee's South Side. That's not snitching. In fact, if you're being accused of something, that's you standing up for yourself. That portion of the probable cause statement is really foundational and, and really can't be used to inculpate Mr. Wiggins on this case. So you see what you hear what Bruce says, and I, I'm a big fan of Bruce, but he says that's not snitching, right? Well, fine, it's not snitching, but it's a statement. He's, he's, he's in the statement. Yeah, that probably didn't get used, but again... You're looking at it from the lawyer's perspective. Jake's looking at it from the real street dude perspective. So, you know, you're never going to agree. Mr. Wiggins was scheduled to go to trial and he didn't go to trial, but two of the witnesses have recanted their statement. There is no evidence that Mr. Ritchie or Mr. Foster was going to testify in this case. When you look at 1090 Jake's presentation of evidence, he puts up a document that says witness list. But just because somebody appears on a fucking witness list doesn't mean that they're gonna be a witness. Here's what I do in all my cases. I take every single person that's, that's named within a police report, no matter where it is or what they think they have to offer, I put everybody on our witness list. That way, everybody's included in case maybe they have some nugget that you're going to use later and you didn't think about. And if you don't have him on your witness list, you can't call him, right? Saying he's a snitch and, and giving this sensational bullshit about paperwork can get people killed. Well, it's, it's a really interesting perspective because, I mean, look, Bruce isn't wrong. Like saying somebody's on paperwork could get them killed. Like that's the reality out here. But also doing crimes with somebody who is on paperwork, who does do witness statements, could get you life in jail. As you, as I'm seeing in the chat, you know, you kind of, although he's a defense lawyer, you know, Bruce is more coming at this from the perspective of the law. 1090 Jake should not have, have gone where he went with this. You think it's really dangerous. The original, there was an original post 
by one of Kodak Black's NFL two wop and he posted some shit about uh boston richie about his paperwork take a look at the paperwork that's supposedly where this witness list came from and when you have ops or whatever people talking about this and talking shit like that this kind of this kind of talk can get somebody killed thing I, i've got the probable cause statement right here and i've gone through it in detail see it's interesting as well it's sort of like I feel like Bruce kind of glosses over this. Uh, I don't think it's on purpose. But again, it's sort of like all this stuff where he's saying, you know, Jake's being irresponsible. He could get somebody killed with what he's saying. Fine. But he did also just acknowledge that the paperwork did originally did originate on another rapper's page. Right. This has already been circulated. Jake's really just the person making heads or tails of the situation. And I'll be honest, like Bruce is try Bruce is kind of coming across like Boston Richie's defense lawyer. He's he's real sticking up for Richie. Uh, you know, maybe maybe that's that's the way he sees it. That, that, that he sees that way from his perspective. But it's like he's he's. I feel like he's really like on his defense lawyer stuff right now. It's almost like he's arguing with the judge of just like these reckless statements could have got my client killed. And Jake wasn't really the one who released that information to begin with. So it's almost like he's directing it to the wrong guy to a certain degree. And there's absolutely nothing in here where he says I saw him kill them. You know, I mean, <laughs> I see in the comments, Bruce is Bruce is acting like Boston Richie has him on retainer. That might be facts. He just it just didn't happen. So here's the only other portion of the affidavit or the probable cause statement where Mr. Richie is named, or at least witness three is named. The defendant admitted to knowing witness three, the relative of the victim. The defendant confirmed that he and witness three had a past altercation, which is the same thing we heard earlier. The defendant, that means Mr. Wiggins, denied witness three's account of the altercation. He stated that approximately two months prior, witness three and his or her brother had arrived on Dunn Street armed with Kalishnikov, AK, style assault rifles and threatened him. So the cops know about this stuff. If Mr. Ritchie is recounting something that happened before, it has nothing to do with this. But it had everything to do with a beef that he had, and the two of them gave varying accounts. At the beginning of this, it's sensationalized. And it's sensationalized in a way to say, hey, look, oh my God, he's a snitch. That's really what it's trying to say. But let's, let's just listen to exactly what he's saying. Investigators interviewed witness three, who according to the witness list, is Jalen Foster. Now let's just say, according like to the witness list, who's... It's like Inception, bro. Watching me react to Bruce, react to Jake. Where does it end, bro? Who's going to react to this? Bruce should react to this. Witness list, is it? Court doesn't give you a witness list. Witness lists are presented by parties. So did Wiggins put him up as a witness? Or did the state put him up as a witness? He doesn't tell us. And here's the thing. When you look at that video, there's no pleading heading. You know, if you look at what a pleading is, it's got a caption to it. This is what a pleading looks like. Do you see how, how it has a caption? Do you see that font? Do you see how it's how how it's written out? Look at his... <laughs> Do you see that font? Do you see that font? How can he snitch in this font? This is a snitch font, not that other font. I get what you're saying, Bruce, but again, he's coming at, coming at it from this legal perspective of like, oh, he's not on this document. It's a different sort of document. But from a street guy's perspective, bro, if your name is on some paperwork, is it's done like you're not trusted witness list in that video and we'll show you that to you in a second it is not in the format that they use it's a made-up document because whoever is the proponent of the witness list has to identify themselves as filing the defense witness list or or the state's witness list richie reluctantly recounted an incident that occurred approximately two months prior involving wig so all he's doing is reading exactly what i read to you He's reading the probable cause portion of the statement. And there's nothing in there that he says about this incident at all. He stated he'd been in the French town neighborhood when the defendant threatened him with the firearm because he was associated he with the so South hard. Side. He threatened me? No, he threatened me. They're both saying the same thing. And both of them gave statements. And they're Roughly both giving statements, later, right? Investigators interviewed witness four, who according to the witness list- Yeah, Bruce, Bruce definitely trying to get work from rappers. You, you see this witness list this, that, he sh that he shows here? That isn't how you black things out if it's a true witness list. Somebody just took a marker and, and that wouldn't be filed with the court. And that's the other thing I checked on this thing. I looked at the, at the court filings. Nowhere is that witness list filed. And it doesn't even fucking matter. The guy entered a plea. Nobody testified against him. And two witnesses, could have even been Mr. Ritchie, recanted their, their account of what their statement was to the cops earlier. This is really reckless, reckless stuff if you're not 100% sure. And even if you are sure, calling out somebody as a snitch can be very, very, very dangerous. So 
Now, in in Jake's defense, okay, I, I, look, I see where Bruce is coming from. He's saying calling people out as a snitch is very dangerous. And that's true. That is dangerous. But let's not forget that Boston Richie himself told Jake in the DMs to look into this. He said, fine, look into it. Jake posted it on his story, said, I'm going to look into this. Richie look, sent the DM and said, look into it. So you want to talk about dangerous and reckless, but let's be real. Richie kind of did court this a little bit and goad Jake into looking Long into it. Long and short of it is this. Two of the witnesses recanted. What does recant mean? Recant means that you go back on your statement. So you say one thing, you know, he did this, and then you get to up to trial and say, nah, he really didn't do that. I was wrong back. So you recant means you go back on what you said. So what, what I said before wasn't true. And so the state's case actually got weaker because those two witnesses recanted. So they probably offered him some other kind of deal that limited his, his prison time, and he took a deal. And he pled no contest. But it has absolutely nothing to do with what Mr. Richie said or didn't say. He took to his Instagram posting wig statement and said, y'all gonna keep flagging or y'all gonna drop your nuts and speak on some real shit. You got Bross and Richie standing up for himself. There's, like I said, there's nothing in the probable cause statement that, which is, you know, Jake goes through this whole probable cause statement. He reads it word for word. And I'm not going to do that here and bore you with that. Everybody no fool ratted on me. I don't be speaking on shit or chasing clout like you jits. I've been outside, never been police. Fool, the reason I even became a witness in the case, he told Troll we pushed up with the Blicks. What's crazy is the contradiction in Boston Richie's post. He's claiming Wig snitched on him by telling the police he pulled up with guns. And, and he, he did... But Wiggins did say that. And because of that statement, Boston Richie became a witness. But this is a lie. According to the affidavit, Boston Richie was interviewed by police on June 23rd, the same day he was arrested for loitering and prowling. Wig wouldn't be interviewed until June 29th, six days later. It doesn't matter. The dates don't really matter. What matters here is that even in the probable cause statement, Wiggins does say that Richie pulled up on them with guns. And Richie just flipped it around and said he pulled up on us with guns. So, so here's the thing. Again, I feel like this is where Jake, uh, this is where Bruce is kind of maybe overlooking the more street code element of this, and he's kind of saying like, oh, you know, they both wrote statements on each other. It doesn't really mean anything. They weren't used for the trial. But it's like he's he's sort of like jumping ahead. He's yes, he's on the lawyer's definition of whether or not the statements were actually used. The state, some state witness statements were recanted. But again, he's forgetting that it's like on the street perspective of this situation as far as jake is concerned yes both sides wrote witness statements on each other that is out of the norm as i said before rule one of criminal criminality 101 no comment you don't comment you don't and this is what i was talking about with the gunner situation the the italian mafia you don't acknowledge this thing of ours you don't acknowledge the existence of the mafia you don't tell the feds the mafia exists you don't write a statement but again the lawyer's going to see it differently. So it's a distinction without a difference. I think if you look at what Jake is saying, doesn't hold water. And you could legitimately be talking to the cops, and you don't know what the questions are. You don't have the recordings. So you could legitimately try to stand up for yourself because this is what I know. You know, because you're pointing the finger at me about going after him with guns. Now, this is what really happened. And by standing up for yourself doesn't mean that you're a snitch. Really dangerous to kind of go down this road. You know, if... So he says stating stuff to the cops, sticking up for yourself doesn't mean you're a snitch. Well, I think, again, it just depends on your definition of, snitch, of, of snitching. Someone in the streets, in these streets, simply speaking to the cops, simply being seen. I mean, if you're a mafiosa or you're a big time gangbanger and you see somebody walking out of the police station or you see the picture of somebody in the inter interview room with the big ass extra large McDonald's in front of them. You know, oh, they might not have necessarily said anything that got used in the case. But as far as a street person's concerned, just it, just speaking to the cops alone is suspicious. Somebody's a snitch, to be honest with you. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say anything about it. Me personally. I don't like snitches. I don't represent snitches. But snitches are part of our culture. They're part of the, the DNA of the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's just what they do. That's how they build all their cases. They have a network of snitches, especially on drug cases. They get a, somebody who's a runner or somebody who's an addict. Okay, who's your source? Who's your source? I'll let you off for free. That, you know, so, but to expose a snitch puts their life in danger. He was interviewed by the cops. So the fuck what? 
He didn't testify. He never testified at any hearing. And he and it doesn't even say he was even there. Instead, he identified Wig by a photograph to police, told them he'd previously been threatened by Wig. I feel like Bruce had to put his glasses on then because he just he just did all this talking about, and I love Bruce, I do like Bruce, but he did all this talking about, so what? So what? The statement was never used. He never testified in court. And then Jake says he identified the guy by a photo lineup. And then Bruce is like, well, hold on, hold on, let me look. Let me put the bifocals on for this one. Let's see that again. Wig by a photo. It doesn't even say he was even there. Instead, he identified Wig by a photograph to police, told them he'd previously been threatened by Wig, and maintained that the Key Street murder was not a result of the altercation or any criminal gang activity Richie may have been involved in, meaning Richie wanted to clarify to police he had nothing to do with the murder. But his sworn statement would make him an official witness in the murder case. His sworn statement, first of all, his statement wasn't sworn. Second of all, he's got no power. The, the police run up on you, they arrest you, do whatever. You can give a statement or don't give a statement. Generally, what do I say? Don't self-snitch. And he didn't self-snitch here. And because he shows up on a witness list doesn't mean that he was necessarily going to testify. I, I just don't like to see people get exposed to potential danger where it's not warranted. And here, it isn't warranted. And his name would be concealed because the information he provided. And look at this. Look at this document. Remember when I told you that there's no caption on here. So we don't know who authored this document. Right. And it, it is just and, and witness lists do not look like this. They just don't. And this list is not on the docket. You would have to file your witness list. And then if you're going to black somebody's name out, you don't think that the uh, government, if that's their witness list, has a function on their word processing program on their you know word where you black something out in I would say this is probably Bruce's strongest point of this video, actually, because for everything Jake said, I, I did think that this witness list document did look a bit fugazi. And, you know, again, Jake was just reacting to content that was put out there by somebody else who had a problem with Richie in, in the first place. Right. So. Jake's not necessarily vouching for all of these documents, but I did think like that was probably the biggest hole in the whole thing of like, eh, this document doesn't look legit, but then it was combined with other documents. And, you know, he was identified as well, uh, seemingly as, as witness three. Um, so, yeah, it's sort of the, the document, that one document did look a little bit sus, but then when combined with everything, I feel Jake paints a pretty strong picture. But, you know, Bruce has got his perspective. A little more neatly than, than with a fucking ma magic marker. That's what that is. This is just somebody uh, doing whatever they were doing. When you're confronted with an allegation, it is not snitching to defend yourself. It just isn't. So I, I think this this unfairly characterizes Boston Richie as a snitch. And Wig would later plead no contest and be sentenced to 15 years in prison for second degree murder and possession of a firearm by a felon. He actually got a pretty good deal. 180 months is not that bad on a second degree murder case. 180, you probably do 100. No, 180, you do probably 15, 120, generally speaking, depending upon where, what state you're in. So it, it does sort of sound like a beef between Two Up and Boston Richie. So one, one of the ways that you can test the validity of a message, you know, what's their motive? And you look at the documents that Jake was given, that was posted by Two Up. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't pass the smell test. He wound up pleading guilty. Nobody fucking testified against him. When they talk about sworn testimony, the witnesses in there didn't swear. They're not under oath. It's the person who created the affidavit. It's the cop who created the affidavit that's under oath, not not anybody else. So none of the witnesses, witnesses one, two, three, four. None of them are, are under oath, but they're in the affidavit. They're not under oath. It's the cop who signs the, that I talked to these people. This is what they said. He's the one that's under oath. So this has just been our little take on Boston Richie, Jake doing a little sensationalized video. I think it's really what it, what it amounts to. I don't see the snitch central as Jake lays it out. So this is Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Make sure you sign up for our Patreon. Uh, follow us on so there you have it, man. The 1090 Jake Bruce Rivers beef. That's like, bro, this is like some <laughs> hip hop YouTube deep lore. I mean, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought?
you'd be seeing the top prison YouTuber beefing with the top hip hop law YouTuber. But you know, I think it's really a case of differing perspectives. I think they're both on polar opposite sides of the spectrum. You got a street dude, a prison dude, and his definition of snitching compared to a lawyer's definition definition of snitching. It's always going to be different, man. Um, but I respect both of them. I think that maybe uh, it's really about semantics. But uh, yeah, that's that's how it goes, man. I want to see a collab. I want to see these two guys jump on like a stream or a call and squash it or work it out or something. But you never know, man. Who knows? Boston Richie might have might have given Bruce Rivers the little bag, the little backhander. But anyway, I'm going to hop off now, guys. I appreciate everybody jumping on to the first stream on YouTube. Trap more gang. I've switched it up, man. The channel's a, we're just a streaming channel now. Don't worry about all the other stuff on the channel, man. Streaming channel now. We're going to do this. Uh, right now, I'm not going to do this crazy amounts. I'm going to do this once a week. But I feel like every week, I want to just try and get better at it. Cover better stuff. Make it more exciting. I'd love to have some people on to do some live calls, live interviews with people. That's really where I want to go with this thing, man. I really want to just be doing like, you know, I've met a lot of interesting people, man. You know, I'm, I'm very blessed and grateful to have just done off the record with DJ Academics and Lil Boom. Um, obviously, I've tapped in with Adam22, the No Jumper fam, all them guys, AD, Blazzy, Housephone, Yuri, all the squad, you know, I did meet I met Lush, but I didn't. It was sort of like I didn't really get a chance to like do anything with him, man. Now I got to link up with Lush. You know, I got to try and do something with everyone else in the No Jumper universe. You know what I mean? All the other people, T Rail, everybody. But we're gonna grow this thing. We're gonna we're gonna make this thing pop in. Okay, it's not. I'm not gonna be on here all day every day. I'm gonna be focused on the main channel videos, which I do have one coming very soon. Keep your eyes peeled. But this is gonna be a fun little outlet where I'm gonna have fun. We're gonna do some good stuff. I could interview Yuri. That would be fire. But we're gonna do some fun stuff on here. And, uh, you know, make this what it was supposed to be. And I'm going to be able to interact with you guys a lot more. So keep your eyes peeled on the main channel for a new video. If, you, if you're if you desperate to see some new content with me, patreon.com slash traplawross. I've actually got two exclusive videos up on Patreon. And very not safe for work. I've got a series called Modern Crime Court on Camera that I've been doing just on my Patreon. Okay, I'm breaking down not safe for work crime scene footage on Patreon. It's fire. So there's two. if you're on the $5 tier, there's two episodes of that up already if you're desperate for new content from me. Or I've got a new, channel, new main channel video dropping, hopefully Monday. Hopefully Monday. We're definitely next week. We're not, we're not, you know what I'm saying? We're not messing around. It's coming. Anyway, appreciate everybody. It's been lit. This has been sick. Enjoyed it. Shout out everybody that watched me eat. It was fire. Appreciate you. Peace out.